even the most seemingly ideal of shots can be ruined by a less than optimal garbage can or random pedestrian eating a hot dog right in the middle of your background. So far away, yet so in focus. Luckily for us, Affinity Photo has not only one, but a few different ways to remove any object that's standing between you and that perfect shot. In this Affinity Photo tutorial, you will learn how to remove an unwanted object in a photograph using the clone brush and patch tool. We'll then bring both of these tools together to create a melancholy weeping ghost girl photo composite because I'm compelled to make everything at least a tiny bit creepy. So stay tuned till the end. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Tuts Plus and let's jump right into Affinity Photo. But first, let me tell you where all the images we will be using today can be found. EnvitoElements.com is my go-to place for stock photos, fonts, graphics, and music. Check out all the links in the video description below. Let's look at both tools individually. Then we'll use their powers combined to remove a whole person from the speech. The patch tool may be the only tool you end up using in some cases, especially if you're working with something that has straight lines that easily match up, anything with a very noticeably repeating pattern. Go ahead and select the patch tool, shortcut J, and create a selection around the object you'd like removed. In my case, this ball or brain, I'm not sure what this is, making it a perfect candidate to be removed. Keep the selection reasonably loose. This by no means needs to be perfect. A rough selection will work just fine. Now move your mouse to an area near the object. In this case, I'm going for the left side. Notice how whatever area you go over with your mouse becomes duplicated within your selection. You want to choose the area that best fits, making sure all edges, lines, or textures match up the best you can almost like a puzzle piece. It doesn't have to be exact as we can go in later and further refine. Just do the best you can in matching the two areas up. And then click and the area will become patched. And as I said, if you need to, you can fine tune your patch by zooming in and making smaller patches, making sure everything is seamless and organic looking. However, the clone stamp tool is my tool of choice for fine tuning or working in smaller and zoomed in sections of a photo. Select the clone stamp tool, shortcut S, and adjust the stamp's brush settings found in the top toolbar. These settings will change as you go, not only from image to image, but from spot to spot within any single photo. In this case, I notice a bee in this dog's mouth who is undoubtedly a very good boy, despite his bee-eating habits. As this area is sharp and in focus, I'm going to make sure my brush is slightly hard, around 50%. And as I want to remove the bee altogether, my opacity and flow should be set to 100%. With my settings in check, I can start clone stamping. Hold Alt to sample an area you want to stamp. Similar to the patch tool, a copy of the area you click will be placed where you paint. I typically sample the area directly below my brush. The sample will then continue to follow my brush, creating a continual stamp. You'll want to avoid things looking too repetitive, however. So every once in a while, sample a different area and paint over any repeating patterns or details. So you really, really want to avoid any kind of repetition. Now that you know how to take everyday objects and distractions out of your photos in the natural world, let's use these tools to create something a bit more supernatural. Here we have a solitary beach that we need to make a bit more solitary to make room for our weeping ghost. Meaning we have to remove this fine young lady here. First, let's start out with the patch tool to give us a good base. Select the woman and just patch her out. Zoom in to do a few more smaller patches. Here is when we can patch back in some of the 
texture we lost since we sampled the sky and not any kind of sandy area. We'll have to patch back in some of those sandy patches. And then finally, do some ultra refining using that clone stamp tool. Being sure to zoom in nice and close, focusing on any areas that seem mismatched or repetitive. Again, nature hates symmetry and repetition. As a quick tip, use a masked out copy of the original image to bring back some of the finer details that may have been accidentally removed from the patchwork. Paint on the black mask with a white brush to mask areas back in, but only masking in the areas that don't contain the object you wanted to remove. In this case, I want to bring back the grass, but not the woman's coat. Also, don't be afraid of just going in with a normal brush to help blend things together, both to color correct or add light. Uh, no painting skills needed. Just be sure to zoom in nice and close. With our background all prepped, we can move on to our ghost. I decided to go for a doll-like stylistic look, which here means big eyes, lips, big old head, uh, with a small nose and small, tiny, dainty little hands. It's all personal preference, however. To give a character any kind of enlarged features without having to actually enlarge an image, leading to pixelization and oftentimes blurriness, import the image onto a canvas and then duplicate it. Now we're going to shrink the original image slightly. The more you shrink, the bigger the eyes and the other features will end up being. And you can always further shrink it later on. There's no commitment yet. Before continuing, use Affinity Photo's Liquify Persona to make any adjustments to the shape of the face's features that will be enlarged. Next, make a real quick selection around the subject's eyes, nose, and mouth and then copy and paste that selection onto its own layer. Now piece by piece, once again, copy and paste the larger features over top of their originals and blend out the edges. Lower the opacity of the layer to help align everything. For instance, I like matching up the pupil of the larger eye with the original eye underneath. So I know the placement isn't too far apart or too close together, leading to some uncanny valley, uh, silliness. Like I said earlier, you can shrink the original image further to increase the size of the eyes if needed. And once everything is blended and placed, we can rasterize or merge the layers. As for the nose and hands, luckily, the shrinking of features works in a similar way to enlarging them. For the nose, you want to just pop back into the liquify persona and push and shape it inwards, um, manually shrinking it, essentially. You can go ahead and also refine the shape of any other part of the face as well, such as rounding out the jawline. For the hands, create a selection around each hand and copy and paste them separately onto new layers, like how we did with the eyes. Only this time, shrink the hands using the transform anchors. Use a soft eraser brush tool to feather out the very edges of the hands, being mindful of blending where you can. But as we shrunk the hands, there will be plenty of areas where the original larger hands are still showing. Remember the clone and patch tool? It's their time to shine again. Using the same techniques as we used in the dog and beach image, remove the leftover hands. 
As we are working in close zoomed in areas, the stamp tool should do the trick. However, feel free to experiment with the patch tool as well. Finally, for things that just can't be stamped, paint. Zoom in nice and close and recreate the colors, lines, and textures you see. And once again, no painting skills needed. You're essentially just manually copying and pasting. Once happy, merge everything together. And if you want her to look even more like a doll, you can enlarge the subject's head using the same method as the eyes. Go ahead and save your newly dollified little girl as a PNG or JPEG, and then drag, drop, and size it onto the cleaned up beach canvas. Extract the subject's body using your preferred method, mine being the pen tool. Whatever you choose, however, just make sure the edges of your subject is slightly feathered. Go ahead and rasterize the mask to the layer and create a quick selection and mask of the subject's hair. Right click on the mask and go to refine mask. Drag the refine brush around the edge of the subject's hair to get a pretty decent mask of the hair and its flyaways. For this particular image, this will do just fine. Next, let's smooth out her skin to a powder finish. I do want to note I only recommend this technique when you want entirely smooth, doll-like skin. This is not for your everyday wedding shots. Go ahead and rasterize and duplicate your ghost girl, adding a layer mask to the duplicate. Zoom in nice and close to the duplicated image's skin and go to Filters Blur Bilateral Blur and play with the settings until you have a good mixture of smooth skin, but sharp features and edges, and then click OK. Fill in the blurred layer's layer mask with black, hiding it completely, and then mask back in the blurred layer over the skin, avoiding the hair, clothes, eyes, nose, and lips. I also opted out of adding blur to the hands, Finish up the subject by merging her and her now blurred skin together and adding strong highlights along the ridges of the nose and face using a overlay layer. Create a second overlay layer to brighten the eyes. And then fill in the edges of the hair with a solid pale blue color to create a rim light effect. Lower the vibrancy, decrease the contrast, and adjust the color balance so that it leans more blue, all using clipped adjustment layers, with the settings as shown. Add that extra bit of doll-like creepiness by adding some soft pink to the little girl's chin, nose, and cheeks using a soft light layer, and then a strong ring of light around her pupils using one last overlay layer. And if you really want to drive home the fact that she's a ghost even more, add a layer mask to the subject, and then using a very large brush, Mask out the parts of the body and face to make her see-through. I also like to keep any creases completely opaque, where any flatter areas are more see-through. A little bit hard to describe, but here's what I'm talking about. These ridges here. Now let's drive the melancholy mood home by adding some glowing tears. Painting tears is as easy as painting white dashed lines on the waterline of the eyes, focusing a lot towards the inner and outer corners of the eyes. Keep the brush flow low and the brush size small. You can experiment with using a harder brush or a softer brush. I prefer a softer brush. When you're working with such small brush sizes, one, two, three pixels, the hardness will matter a little bit less. You can also use images of water droplets to create tears by selecting some water, preferably on a black background, pasting it onto a new layer, and then setting it to screen. Instant tears. I am going to finish up the tears by giving them a ghostly glowing edge using a layer set to screen and a soft round brush, 
feel free to add some solid white sparkles as well. This is a great chance to experiment with movement, color, uh, reflections, any kind of little details will really bring your image to that next level. And for the final, final, final finishing touches, adding some blurred grass helps fill in the foreground. And as this is a 3D stock image, not only can I pick and choose different rotations and angles, it comes background free, no extraction needed. Apply a quick filters field blur and a little bit of color correction if needed, and you are done. For the color grade, I'm just going to do a quick rundown for this image. Go ahead and pause if you would like to replicate it for yourself. First, a slight S-curve to pump up the contrast. Next up, the real heavy lifter, a selective color layer adjustment, adjusting the reds, cyans, blues, magentas, whites, and neutrals bringing out the reds and giving everything a wash of blue. Now, a second curves layer to pump up the blues and the highlights. And finally, a pixel layer filled with a dark purple brown color and then set to lighten, which will give a very subtle but appreciated effect and kind of help tie everything together. And there you have it. Whether you need to remove small objects, whole people, or maybe just a hand or eyebrow or two, the clone and patch tool are sure to be your best friends. And in some cases, even the brush tool. The brush tool is actually my go-to tattoo remover, but that's a story for another day. So if you like this video and would like to see more, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new and inspiring videos. And if you are looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other excellent tutorials that Envato Touch Plus has to offer. I'm Abby Esparza, see you next time.